My name is Dr. Human Danish. I'm the Director of Integrative Pain Management at Mount Sinai. And today we're going to talk about cervical facet pain and how that contributes to migraines. So migraines or headaches are a spectrum of disorders and our understanding of what a migraine is has really changed recently. We used to think migraines were only associated with light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, feelings of nausea, and potentially even vomiting. But we've now understood that there's a whole spectrum of this, just like most diseases. And some feel that really any type of headache or pain in your face could be coming from a migraine. And it's worth an evaluation to figure that out. So migraines are one of those things that have many things contributing to them that can all contribute a little bit or one thing that contributes a lot and other things just support it. So my role as a physiatrist is to always look at things and how they're connected to see what things that you can do to decrease the frequency or intensity of a migraine. So depending on what's contributing to your migraine, there are lots of treatment options. Um, there are of course the medication management, which is handled by neurologists mostly, um, such as the triptan medications that you may have heard of. There's also Botox injections, which will um, be multiple injections throughout your face and the back of your head, which can help reduce your headache frequencies as well, or slash migraines. Um, however, there is something that contributes to migraines that we don't talk about enough, and that's partly posture related, but it comes down to the joints in your neck. There are these things in your spine called facets, and they travel all the way from your neck to your tailbone, and they're these small little joints that travel all the way down. The purpose of this joint is to add a little bit of stability, but it's also supposed to have some movement in them. When they get irritated or inflamed, particularly in the neck, they can be a contributor to migraines. So one of the things that we can do is to test how much of your migraine or headaches are coming from these joints. And what we do is we target this, th this facet joint right here with a needle and we numb it up and it we give you hours of relief. If that does break your cycle and it does give you relief, then we know that your pain is coming from these particular joints. So if you have headaches, migraines, facial pain, potentially even TMJ pain, and you also have neck pain that's worse when you look up like this, when you look up, that loads the joints in your neck. And by treating those joints in your neck, you could see benefit with all the other symptoms in your face. When we are embryologically formed, these areas are very close to each other and as we're as we grow those just separate and that's why you think oh well, how is my neck related to my face is because really they really are close together and there are lots of complexes and so one of them is the trigeminal cervical complex which basically amplifies migraines and by turning down that amplification process you can also help people with migraines and facial pain as well so if you respond to the facet blocks you end up getting a treatment which is called a radiofrequency ablation. And those ablations can give you relief for six months and up to a year. But that's only part of the treatment plan. Because if your rotator cuffs are weak and the musculature in the back of your shoulders and up into your neck are weak, you're constantly loading these joints in your neck, which if they're contributing to your migraines or the cause of your migraines, then that needs to be addressed. And one of them is by doing certain exercises to strengthen your rotator cuffs, like W's, T's, and Y's. But if you do them incorrectly, you're gonna end up having more pain. So it's one of those things that, that you need a comprehensive treatment plan with injections, physical therapy, and of course, ergonomic evaluation to make sure that you're not staring up at your computer screen all day long. So depends what causes the migraine. If you treat the underlying cause, you may be able to cure it. If it has a multiple little factors that contribute it, some people have diet triggers, some people have uh, workstation triggers, some people have uh, triggers they can't identify, like, and some have weather triggers. So if we can identify the trigger and treat the trigger, the migraine frequency will drastically decrease. If you have a migraine, you should definitely get evaluated to see what the potential causes of the migraine are. If you have migraines or headaches or facial pain, and neck pain that's worse when you look up like that, then you should be evaluated to see if you're a candidate for cervical facet blocks. So again, lifestyle changes are important if you know what the trigger is. Um, there are lots of theories about what diets can potentially help. 
But what the way that I look at it is if you have a tight chest, which pulls your chest forward, and if you're sitting like this, all this, you're pulling your shoulders down. Now you don't wanna be looking down, so then you end up looking what you think is straight, but it's really you're looking up and you're loading the joint in your neck. If the top of your computer screen is, is above eye level, every single time you're going to the top portion of the key where you're Xing out, you're starting to look up and load the joints in your neck. If you're wearing bifocal glasses and you're trying to read something and you have to look up to read, you're loading these joints in your neck. If you have a small narrow apartment and you have a big screen TV that you've mounted, you're in the same situation where you're looking up to look at the, at the TV screen and you end up loading these joints in your neck. If you're getting your hair done and it's taking a long time, or if you go to the dentist and your head is in this position for a long period of time, these are all things that will end up loading the joints in your neck over a long period of time, like over an hour or so, and then that can trigger your headaches or your migraines and neck pain.